when you look at a player, what you look at Kevin's real success and what is really important for you kids, it's Kevin as a person. Because as much as we all aspire to be Kevin Streelman and go out on tour, the reality is that very few players get that opportunity. But let's take a look at Kevin's successes. He is an outstanding son and husband. He takes time to give back to the community. Him coming out here today is means that he left his house in Arizona. He flew here. He's spending an entire day to help give back to the people that helped him. And that's really a true statement of character in a person. He was an outstanding student. And I think for you young ones, this is the most important thing. The reason Kevin had the success is he put himself in position to earn the opportunity. He had great grades at Wheaton Warrenville South High School. That gave him a chance to go to one of the best universities in the, in the U.S., Duke University, where we got to go play on a golf scholarship. So as you kids go to school and put your time in, golf is great. Work very hard at golf, but never lose sight of your education because that's going to take care of you the rest of your life. This is just a dream come true for me, and uh, this is where it all started for me. I know we, we talked about it, but honestly, this is the chipping green. That's the putting green, and those are the bunkers you know, on the other side there that I learned how to play. <clears throat> I learned how to play the game and hone my skills and um, you know but I, I want to spend a lot of time with each of you guys and, and my main thing being here is to show you that you know with a lot of hard work a lot of perseverance growing up in Chicago in the Midwest with the tough winters and, and uh, hot summers you know you don't have to be playing golf 12, 12 months a year you don't have to be an AJJ All-American when you're 11 years old in order to succeed at this game. You just need to keep working hard and keep staying, you know, staying the path and surrounding yourself with the right people and the right environments um, to, to allow yourself to succeed. So, A, I want to have a ton of fun today. I want to get to know everybody. And um, just want to thank you all for coming out because this is, uh, for me, my dream to hang out with people who, who love the game like I do and who want to get better. And uh, you guys inspire me as much as hopefully I can inspire you a little bit. So thanks for coming and let's have a ton of fun. it's important for you guys growing up to not get so stuck on okay 100 yards it's a perfect pitching wedge just hit the you know stock normal high pitching wedge like work on hitting your nine iron 100 yards then where your eight iron 100 yards then your seven iron 100 yards and work up and down to try and hit all these different flights and different creativity you know just just expand your mind to to change spin rates you know the harder you spin the harder you swing the more spin you put on it so let's say pins way in a back corner where you can't have spin because it's going to rip off you want to bounce it in there so you take one or two extra clubs and you work on hitting that shot that develop that's development as a player um it's it, you know we can get so stuck in reading golf digest and got to be on plane at the top you know that's only a small piece of the puzzle there's a, there's a lot more to golf than just a perfect golf swing and there's a lot of great players that don't have perfect golf swings, but they believe in what they do, and they've developed all these other shots and routines to be able to execute when they need to. So just play the game, love the game, don't get so obsessed here, become obsessed out there with targets and tempo and tension. I've, that's kind of the last five years something I've really been working on that I've, I've seen results with, is becoming less obsessed with my golf swing and more obsessed with how to get the ball in the hole quick. And uh, that seems to pay off a lot, a lot more. Good swing. Good swing. Good job, buddy. I think it's important to develop as an athlete as much as possible. And when I say, like, you know, 
if you're if you're playing tennis, if you're playing baseball or softball or throwing, you know, you're you're developing your hand-eye coordination, you're developing uh, your foot-eye coordination, you're developing just your competitive nature around you with with other friends, with other teammates, how to handle competition. You just kind of handle. You have a lot of things thrown at you, and um, playing different sports kind of. I think builds you up as a, as an athlete. There's some. It also I think builds your your body and your muscle structure a little bit better. You know the the I'm always fighting the opposite things I do in golf and in, in my workout regimen. You know in golf we're always here. Our shoulders are always slumped and they're always in front of us. So whenever I'm doing my workout stuff, I'm always usually pulling things to kind of align, get my alignment back to neutral. So you know when we're so when we're so focused on in any sport, I'll do that to you. You know same thing. My left hip's a lot tighter than my right hip because you keep firing into it like that. Um, for thousands of balls, you know, years after years. So um, it just, I think, develops your body. It develops your, your uh, abilities, and, and uh, it's just a, a good thing to, while you're young, I promise you, you don't have to be, like I said, you don't have to be an All-American by your 14th birthday to play at a big university or to play on the PGA Tour. I promise you that. Love doing golf, but was never, you know, was never an All-American, was never, uh, never won every tournament. But I just slowly... You know, stayed the course and and kept working hard and kept just day by day, just 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 going, you know, going at it. And slowly, it, it, you know, I was fortunate to go to Duke and play there and, and saw these other guys that were those All Americans. And I said, you know what, they are a little better than me for sure, but I think I can hang with them. And and um, it's again just slowly kept working. Felt like I had to work harder than them, and I just kept working harder than them. And I knew in the end maybe it'd be a decent result. And so that's kind of has been my deal since I was 15 years old. Just right. just want to work harder than everybody. I continue to do it today and i um, going to ride it as long as I can. <laughs> As soon as a golf ball leaves our club face, putter face, wedge face, driver face, it's gone. There's nothing else you can do about it. The only thing you can have, that you can work on is your attitude and the way you perceive it. And the, the, the more negative you are, the more tendency you are to throw a club down or to you know, say something you shouldn't say, the, the, the more that that's going to linger in your head and in your brain. And your brain's wired to remember emotions like that. And so if we're able to let go of those and just, I mean, kind of the trick I use, I say it's, you know, it's a factual thing. It, let's say I hit, hit one in the, in the water. Well, I pulled it in the water. I got to go up and try my best on the next shot. But I can't do anything about that shot because it's already off my club face. It's already gone. And the more worse of an attitude I have, the longer it's going to stay with me and it's going to affect my next shot and my next shot and my next shot. All of a sudden you make three bogeys in a row when it should have just been one and you maybe should have made birdie or par in the next hole. So that's a critical skill. That's not necessarily, you know, the plane of your golf swing, but that's learning how to deal with what's inside your heart and your soul that can, you know, help you score better on the golf course, which has ended up being the, you know, that's the most important goal we got out here is to get the ball in the hole as quickly as possible. So it's critical to let go of that stuff as, as soon as you can. I never want to step up to a golf shot or putt and be scared of an outcome. And to be honest, the way that I have overcome that is the fact that I have hit a lot of terrible golf shots in important parts, important situations throughout my career. And I know in the future I will as well. And so the fact that I know that's going to happen at some point, doesn't, it doesn't scare me, that doesn't worry me. Because we're all human and we're all golfers and we're all going to make mistakes. And I never want to finish around and look back and say, wow, I didn't step into that without full confidence or without um, you know, belief in what I do or the work I've put in. And so if, if I screw up, I'm totally fine with that as long as I know I, I gave it my all and I prepared as well as I can. And then you leave the results to take care of themselves.
I've shot 60 a few times. One with Carmel Valley Ranch, which is outside near Pebble Beach. My uncle is a member there. And I shot a 60 there one time. And then on the D Dakotas tour in a practice round at a course called Vermilion up in, in uh, South Dakota. My first year out of school, I shot a 60 on, on that course as well. So I've had a couple good rounds here around Cantini. I'm not sure exactly, but a couple of 61s or 62s around here. But um, once in a while, I get hot. You know, to be out on the tour has been a dream come true for me. There's, it, it's amazing. And um, I'm very fortunate that Courtney, my wife, travels with me. We don't have any kids yet, so um, it's, it's nice and easy for us compared to some of the other guys as far as that goes. But the hard part is being away from home so much. You're, you're gone, you know, between 30 and 40 weeks a year. And so um, you kind of miss, you miss a lot of birthdays, you miss anniversaries, you miss weddings, you miss... A lot of things that we kind of take for granted in normal day life that um, I'm just on the road and in a hotel room a lot of the times and, and kind of away from my family and friends. So that's, that's kind of the hardest part and that's the sacrifice of it. And that's also the reason, you know, I, I plan on, like I said, continuing to work hard and see where, see where everything takes me. But I don't, I don't see myself playing till I'm 60 years old um, professionally. I want to be home and I want to be a great dad and I want to be, um, honestly, I, I love working with kids. I'd like to be a swing instructor at a golf course near where I live in, in Phoenix or maybe back here one day. But um, that to me is to, to be able to share with you guys and to help you guys out is what to see you guys kind of get something that I've been through and can help you, you know, kind of get you on that road where maybe you guys can get a scholarship or you guys can, you know, get in some tour events or win on the tour. Like to me, that would be fulfilling one day to be able to share with what I've learned with others. So.